You keep it out. Gatekeeping is good because gatekeeping keeps the sewer from spilling out into your yard. Do you decide what to allow with a whitelist? Do you decide what to disallow using a blacklist? If so, you're racist. Or at least, so says some of these fools who are changing it to an allow list and deny list, or allow list and block list. But wait, there's more. Do you have a technical device where one of the parts of the device tells all the other devices what to do and they must do exactly what the thing says? Well, you might be using terminology like master or slave. But that also makes you racist. Because you see, you could use leader and follower. Except, a follower doesn't have to do what a leader says. A follower doesn't necessarily follow the leader the way that a slave takes orders from the master and always follows them. So the terminology isn't even accurate that they're trying to revise things to. Allow list, more syllables. Deny list, more syllables. Leader follower, clumsy, not quite appropriate. Plus, allow list versus white list, you're breaking tradition with decades upon decades of technical terminology. Now, people will be introduced to allow list, deny list, and when they run into white list and black list anywhere else, what is that? I've not heard of that. Granted, this isn't a problem in the near future, but in the far future, what the hell is a whitelist? I don't know what that means. What, what, do you, what do you do with a whitelist? Oh, oh that, that's what an allow list was before somebody decided that terminology that refers to life or light somehow now has something to do with color-based racial groupings like black and white skin. By the way, check out that white skin. You could use that as a reference card for your camera right there. It's so white. Oh, wait. It's not. My skin has a brownish hue to it. How did that happen? Probably because the whole colored racial thing is stupid in the first place. I am a white person. But look at this. There's no white. See that back there? What's that? Oh, my God. It's a white light. It's a white light. And am I going to put that light on a white list? Maybe. But you know what I'm not going to put on a white list? This ruddy brown complexioned white guy's skin. Oh, that doesn't go on the white list. See, the argument is that, at least linguists have made this argument, that the language around you tells you what to think. There's this notion that people are not able to think for themselves and that the language that surrounds them tells them how to think, how to feel, what they should do, what is right and wrong. And granted, there is an argument to be made that language itself can have an influence on you depending on <clears throat> how you interpret it and what you choose to believe based on what's thrown at you, but this is the problem. The argument that somehow having whitelist and blacklist in the technical language of your program makes white people seem like the good people and black people seem like the bad people, that argument holds no real water because if you are a human being and you have agency, and you can think for yourself. Oh my God, you can think for yourself. <laughs> How dare you? That's racist of you to think for yourself. But if you can think for yourself, then you know that whitelist refers to technical things, blocking or allowing or other terminology, things to either go or not go, keeping traffic from going away. Now. If I use a whitelist to allow certain IP addresses to talk to me, does that mean that white people are the best race? 
Mmm, oh god, when you put it that way, it just doesn't hold up, does it? Oh, oh, that's too bad. The narrative's just crumbling around me because I am a reasonably intelligent person who can read a thing and understand that it means a thing in a context and that other contexts don't apply to it. Oh my god, what a revolutionary idea. Context, holy crap. When, when the allow listers like learn about this context thing, oh no, it's, it's, they're not gonna be able to deal with just how much more they can do because all of a sudden things will change meaning depending on what's around them. Oh my god. This is the problem with changing terminology. What's really going on here, this is ideological reinforcement of this lunatic racial, cl this class, not even, you know, class, but identity-based narratives where you produce victimhood, whether real or not, you produce a declaration of a victimhood, and then you use that to get rules put in place and then you exploit the rules that you put in place, that you had put in place, under a noble spirit. You exploit those rules using a process called rules lawyering, where they're put in place in a spirit, a certain spirit of the law, and then you take that same spirit of the law and beat the crap out of it by going, this is what the rule literally says, that's what I want you to enforce. Um, and the problem being, if you get a rule that says you won't make people feel uncomfortable, it doesn't mean that the people have to legitimately be uncomfortable. They only have to declare their discomfort. Boom, you violated the rules. You're kicked out of this community. Now we can kick everyone out of the community that doesn't fall in line and spread our ideology in this manner. This is where this is really going, this manipulation of technical vocabulary. It's the same thing with software codes of conduct, like the whole GitHub adopting the to-do groups open code of conduct. Um, originally, that code of conduct had language in it saying that we will, we prioritize marginalized people's comfort, or marginalized people something or another over privileged people's comfort. We will not act on claims of reverse racism, blah, 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 blah. Stupid, stupid stuff. But basically just a gigantic ideological cram. Now what they did was they took that out and put cushier language in that hides that motivation, that makes it easier to enforce that motivation without being as overt. So when you accept this, when you accept the mere idea that the people who are contributing to your project have to have a code of conduct to dictate to them, whereas, you know, the code of conduct that has largely been in place, don't be a dick, and then in subtext you could say, unless it's really necessary. Linus Torvalds, for example, he did the right thing. He was only a dick to people that he knew and that he interacted with personally, but it was publicly visible. There's your problem. Other people saw it and got offended on behalf of the person. And someone did something stupid, a guy named Morrow in particular in the incident I'm thinking of, someone did something stupid that they should not have done. And Linus is like, what is wrong with you, dude? You're being dumb. You are so ridiculous right now. What is wrong with you? What is your problem? That is so stupid. You know better than this. You need to stop being stupid. But he knew the guy. That's the way they interacted. Other people got offended on his behalf, but other people don't have the right to get offended on behalf of third parties. This is how much offense they're allowed to take. None. None. You're not allowed to be offended for other people. You are not a proxy to defend other people. You are not a benevolent defender of the underprivileged. What you are is someone who is co-opting those other people for your own gain. That is what the manipulation of technical language is. That is what the code of conduct thing is. And when you accept the premise that you need a code of conduct, that you need this magic rule sheet for how people will talk to each other in your software project, in your open source project, even in projects in general, you don't need a code of conduct. What you need is someone who is reasonable, who can arbitrate, and who can be arbitrary and provide flex where necessary. And you know what? If they're not doing a good job, you get them fired. And that's it. The problem is, at this point, 
with the code of conduct thing, they can codify something that allows them to kick anybody out that does not adhere. And then you just get enough shrieking people and the pressure will cause people to give in and that's the end of it. Same thing with allow list, deny list, follower leader, whatever, the fancy little cushy language that George Carlin warned us about a long time ago, that the whole political correctness thing becoming corrupted warned us about quite clearly a long time ago and has warned us about again in the 2010s. And here we are again with all this crap. It just continues. I'm looking at all these software projects and they have this allow list, deny list crap. And you would think that it's not a big deal. Oh, they just changed some words in their project. It really isn't a big deal. You know, they're just trying to be more inclusive or at the very least, it's not gonna hurt them. And it might offend some people, so why not change it? First of all, a lot of projects that have made that change have had to deal with the fact that they're changing the terms that are hard baked into the software and that other things have relied on. So all of a sudden, you have this problem where the changes don't work right because, oh, we used a different word. Well, that's not the word that's used in this other thing, so now they don't talk anymore. And this is the thing they're making the changes for non technical reasons. They're making the changes for feels, not reels. They're making the changes for dumb reasons, to kowtow to people who have a loud voice that claim they don't have a loud voice, to kowtow to people who bully while claiming to be victims, but not for technical reasons. It, de it detracts from the quality of the project, it makes people look stupid, and you, by doing it, by taking this, just the allow list, deny list thing, just by accepting that, that alone, just even that one acceptance of this language, you are accepting the ideology that produced the language. I have said in other videos and I'm saying in this video now, you do not use the language of those who would oppress you. You don't do it. You do not accept changes from people who would use those changes to control you. You only allow people to make changes if those people fall in line with what you already have set up. If those people come to you with noble intentions, if those people come to you and they are pure, if they are not of pure heart, if they have their fingers crossed behind their back and they're trying to get you to be more inclusive, but in reality they're getting you to put in rules that will allow them to dismantle the entire community around your project, and if, they, if your project's run by some committee, even get you kicked off your own creation, which is a thing that has happened many times now. You don't let that in. You keep it out. Gatekeeping is good because gatekeeping keeps the sewer from spilling out into your yard. Gatekeeping is the process by which you prevent cancel culture from coming in and doing the cancellation. And that is the reason you do not accept this trash changing of verbiage. Because once you accept the notion of a code of conduct and put anything in place, Poof, you're done. Once you accept changing your language to be more inclusive when it's a technical term used in a technical context and there's no technical reason to do so, you've accepted the ideology. The foot's in the door and you can't shut the fucking door anymore. You're done. That's it. You have opened the door to the poop flowing in and flooding your house and forcing you to tear it all down or walk away and find a new house. That's the end of it. You're toast. But you could stop it from getting that far. And let me tell you how I did it. GitHub likes to tell people you should put a code of conduct on your project. And a bunch of people just go along with it because they're ignorant sheep who don't even pay any attention to anything. Don't ask why well, I need a code of conduct. Well, if GitHub says I should do it, then that, then I should do it. So I looked around and I tried to find some defiant codes of conduct to put up. Um, there are a variety of them. Um, do There's like a do whatever the fuck you want code of conduct. Um, there's the... I think it's called the no code of conduct, the NCOC. <laughs> NCOC, that's like a verb. But <clears throat> I looked at all these and I was like, I'll put one of these up that just says, there is no code of conduct, screw you. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized the problem with putting up even a joke code of conduct was that if I put up the joke code of conduct, 
even though I'm doing this, or at least I think this is what I'm doing, to the code of conduct paradigm and the ideology that created and pushes it, I'm not. Because even though I am putting this no code of conduct or this like don't be a dick code of conduct or whatever, this joke like there is no code of conduct, just be a decent person thing down, I'm still accepting the notion that there should be one in the first place. Any ground given up is acceptance of the ideology that you don't want creeping in and destroying your project, tossing you out on the street. You don't want to do it. You don't let them in for a minute. And there's no reason that you have to let them in. I've seen so many projects just give up and say, okay, you know what? We'll, we'll just give in so that we don't have to deal with this anymore. Invariably, it gets taken over by these loony people who want nothing more than to feel powerful. And they're not there for the good of the project. They're there to masturbate over how powerful they are and how much they can screw you over. That's it. There's no benevolence involved. So you don't let give them an inch. You don't put up even a joke code of conduct because your joke code of conduct has real consequences. And those real consequences from your joke code of conduct are that you've accepted a code of conduct. And if you allow them to change it from a whitelist to an allow list and a, blo a blacklist to a block list or deny list, then even though you think, well, it's not a big deal, it doesn't matter what it's called. It still works the same way, and people will understand it either way. You've accepted an ideological-based change rather than a technical one. You've given in. And if you give in, don't be surprised when months, even a couple years later down the road, you are hung by that foot you allowed in the door. Once you open Pandora's box of social justice lunacy and allow it in, it doesn't go away. And then you start seeing network effects. This is where it gets even worse. You start seeing network effects from your behavior. Now, Google Chrome, Chromium, has changed all of their verbiage from whitelist, blacklist, to allow list, deny list. Now, Every project that wants to talk to Chromium, everything that wants to touch Chromium directly in any way, is now forced to change their own verbiage to conform to Chromium. Chromium's a huge project. Social justice weirdos are all over it. And they've changed the language. Now you have to change the language. So you start getting into a thing where this is not just a simple changing of terminology. It is a virus. It is a disease. It spreads across projects. And if one uses it and another needs to talk to that one, they have to then adopt the infection. And the infection spreads. And it gets worse. More and more people accept the ideology, the foot in the door, without even thinking about it because they just have to or that's just the way it is. But why is that there? When you find out why that word exists, allow list, which still isn't in my phone dictionary by the way, it's not actually widely accepted. It's just a thing that some lunatics did in a big project and now it's all over the place giving it this mimicry of acceptance. But once you allow that out, once you allow it to spread more, now everybody's being forced to have it. The only people who won't are outliers like me, who I don't work on any projects that have to directly interface with other stuff that would ever do that. The C library is not going to change to an allow list, deny list, could probably because they don't have that. But I, I have my own independent projects that I'm the only person who works on and they don't link to other things that are going to ever have this problem. So I'm an outlier. I, if I don't change, well, big whoop, because guess what? My projects stand alone, and they don't have network effects against other projects. But that means that I'm the guy sitting here not making use of ideologically tainted language of oppressors while everybody else is using the tainted language, and it spreads exponentially. It is literally a linguistic virus, and the worst part is it's a linguistic virus in a technical world, a world where 
terminology existed that did not have racial connotations, that had nothing to do with the people and everything to do with the notion of a blacklist, which meant death originally, which meant this is a list of the people that we will kill, and it softened over time and became generic language, had nothing to do with African descent people or anybody who's got brown skin generally gets lumped in as black at this point, which kind of shows you, yeah, colored people. Oh, I'm sorry, people of color. These people are nuts. So don't let it in. Don't let it in. Don't let it spread. Stop the disease of bad ideological language in your projects. Stop allowing this language to spread because if you let it, its foot in the door, then you become a host, a viral cell, spreading that virus to others. And it doesn't stop until enough of you make it stop. Make it stop. Thanks for listening. Like, comment, subscribe. If you enjoyed this, send me a donation. Links down below or on jodybruchon.com. Have a wonderful day, and I hope that this has made you think. Take care.